In the previous class, we have seen uh, about the deformations, various kinds of deformations we have seen. Now, we will see different types of forces that is causing that deformations. Okay? And in the next classes, we will see what is the resistance we are getting because of that deformation. So, when we apply force, the body deforms and then we get stress because of that deformation as a form of resistance to the deformation. This is how the behavior. Okay? That is the reason. First, we will see what are the forces that is acting on the structure or particularly structural element we can say because we really do not apply the load on the entire structure or study the entire structure. We basically analyze the individual structural elements, okay? whether it is beam or column like this, in individual elements we will analyze not the overall structure basically. Okay? So what are the various types of forces? So as we have seen tensile deformation that is caused by tensile force. As I said in strength of materials, we will always have equal and opposite forces. Okay? Again in compression, two forces. Next in shear, there are two types of shear. One shear you can see, if you have fixed and sheared like this, this is called simple shear. In our syllabus, whatever the force we are applying, equal and opposite force will be there. So as you have a shear force this side, there will be a resistant shear force also this side. But this is not the pure shear. This is a simple shear we study. But uh, inside the element when we are shearing, there will be no support like this, right? So for every element, whatever the shear that is subjected, it will be in the form of pure shear. So pure shear means the shear will be like this, okay? Or it can be reverse also, clockwise or anti-clockwise shear. Okay, these are examples of pure shear. Okay, this is called simple shear. Simple shear is different from pure shear. So, the total deformation will be again delta. While uh, discussing about the simple uh, shear stress, I will explain in detail. Okay. Okay, so this is, uh, so tensile force, compression force, in shear again two types, pure shear and uh, simple shear. Okay. We really do not apply the shear directly, we get in the form of bending and uh, torsion. Generally, uh, directly applying shear cases is very less in strength of materials for us. Okay? Right. So, a structure can be sheared like this, a structure can be bent like this, a structure can be twisted like this. Okay? As you can see, because of this depth, if you are shearing, you can see a moment is acting here. So, the counteracting moment, whatever is generated because of this depth. So, to counteract this moment, another shear will come. So, this combination is called pure shear case. Similarly, if you are applying shear in one direction, because of the distance between this, it creates a couple. So, counteracting couple must be there. This is correct. Okay. So, that is about compression, tension and shear. Okay. So, you have seen normal applying shear which is a very rare case. Next, bending. So, suppose if you are applying a load to bend. So, whatever I have shown you in the initial classes to bend. Generally, every bending will have bending plus shear combination. You cannot alone bend a uh, structure. There are special cases where you will have pure bending means there will be no shear. Everywhere, wherever you see, the deformation is pure bending without shear. But when you are applying a load like this, generally when we are standing on the structure, we will not bend the beam like this, right? So, obviously, when you are standing on the structure, obviously, it will have shear. Means, you will not see pure bending. It, you will see some shear along with bending. Majority of the uh, bending within our syllabus will have bending and shear combination. This chapter is also mainly focused on the beams when we are bending. It has a combination of shear as well as bending. How it comes, I will show you. Don't If you are not understanding now, no need to worry. You will understand later. Okay? Within this class only, you will get clarity on that. Okay? Right. So, when you, whenever you are bending a beam, okay, bending a structure, there are two ways it can be bent. One is Red color may not be visible clearly. One is you can have pure bending or 
bending plus shear. There are two ways you can bend the structure. If you are applying a load like this, generally it should be it should have bending and shear combination only. Okay. If you observe, it is a pure bending. If you can feel that it is a pure bending. So I hope you can feel what is shear. For a section, so you you imagine there are two sections here. Okay. If it is bending in the top, in the top, you will have tension, this kind of bending, you will have tension and in the bottom you should have compression or in the top you can have compression, in the bottom you can have tension. This is bending. It can be like this or it can be like this. This kind of stresses can come. This is very clear for you, right? Like this. But when we apply a load like this, instead of bending, if you apply a load like this, what happens? It has a, it has two kinds of deformation combinedly. One deformation is this, other deformation is this. So it have a combination of like this. Because you have apply a load, this load will try to shear this, not only bend this, it will try to shear this. If you take a cross section here and apply a load, it will try to shear as well as bend. So the deformation also will be the resultant of shear as well as bending. So it causes a shear deformation and bending depending on the shear force whatever in the cross section. It will try to shear as well as bend. Okay. So every cross section will be subjected to different types of forces. Suppose if I am applying a load like this, this load will try to shear this as well as bend this. Suppose if I am applying another load like this, this will try to compress this also. So if you take a particular cross section, this particular cross section is deformed in three ways. One is it is bending, shearing and pushing. The resultant deformation whatever we see will be the final deformation. Okay? So that is why we have to understand uh, for whatever the loading we are applying on it, we have to understand what is the kind of deformation it is giving based on that what is the type of stresses we are getting we can calculate in later chapters. Okay? And one more way, way of deformation is torsion. So in the torsion what is the kind of stress we get means shear. Okay? So the same beam can be subjected to torsion, bending, shear, axial load, multiple ways you can apply. Means for a beam, you can apply like this or out of the plane. Means this is with respect to y axis, this is with respect to x axis. Okay, This is out of the plane. Means with respect to this axis, this torsion is like this. With respect to this axis, this torsion is like this. Okay. So here the same beam is subjected to the same cross section and one more axial also will apply. Okay. Now a cross section is subjected to compression load, shear load, axial load, bending and twisting. So the deformation, the final deformation of this cross section will be because of the combination of loads at this particular. So at this point what is the amount of shear load it has, what is the amount of axial load it has, what is the amount of bending it has. So based on that combination deformation we get, that combination deformation will give you combination resistance. How much bending stress it developed, how much compression stress it developed, how much axial stress it developed, how much torsional stress it developed, like this we can calculate. Okay. Now how to differentiate this bending and twisting? If you, we are uh, giving a couple, so whether the couple is giving twisting or bending, how to identify this? So see, take a 3D beam here, every 3D beam will have 3 axis x, y, z for any cross section. Take any cross section here, okay. So this will have 3, cross, three axis 1, 2 and 3, right. So in this axis, whichever axis is along the length, this is called as longitudinal axis. There is one more way to identify this. If you observe longitudinal axis, it will cut the cross section only at single point. If you see y axis and x axis, it is cutting at more than one point for the cross section. Okay. So for a cross section, if you take a cross section, 
the axis has to cut the cross section only at single point that is that will be the longitudinal section that will be the longitudinal section how to identify the cross section you know the length of the body right so cross section will be perpendicular to the length of the body longitudinal section means it will be along the length even if you take a spring when you say about the length of the spring okay when we say about the length of the spring how we measure the length of the spring like this okay now what will be the cross section of the spring as the length of the spring is taken like this the cross section of the spring will be this one when you cut a cross section into any point along the length that will be the cross section so all the cross section need not be in the same line but when we are moving along the length with the same cross section the entire body will form for the entire body if you move with the cross section shape along the length if it is a prismatic prismatic mean uh, no change in shape along the length so for a prismatic if you take uh, non prismatic means you will have a different shape suppose if you take something like this so you can see here the cross section is changing this is not a prismatic beam it is a not prismatic beam because the cross section is not same okay this is prismatic because you have a uh, uniform cross section here okay so similarly you have a uh, so even if you if you take a cross section and move along the length the entire body will form for a prismatic beam in that way also you can identify the cross section so here if you take cross section the longitudinal axis will be this if you take cross section here the longitudinal axis will be this if you take here the long so for a spring the longitudinal axis is not same for all the cross sections but for a beam longitudinal cross longitudinal section is same for all the cross section wherever you are taking the cross section the longitudinal axis remains same but for the spring it is different so you have to you should be able to identify the longitudinal section to find whether it is subjected to torsion or uh, bending there are some rules to identify this there are some shortcuts which i will be explaining you in further classes okay so in this way a, uh, a structure is subjected to load which create various kinds of deformations a structure is subjected to various types of loads which creates various types of deformation that creates various types of stresses which has to be analyzed because that causes the failure of the structure that stress whatever is created will cause the failure of the structure in order to safeguard the structure we have to limit the stresses within the permissible limit means we have to limit the deformation means we have to limit the load okay so for the given load whatever is the generally load cannot be limited because the purpose of the structure should be to resist a particular load so for this particular type of load what is the kind of structure shape material we have to choose so that the structure will deform within the elastic limit and whenever we are re removing the load it should come back to its original position so that is how within the elastic limit we have to design the structure okay so when we are applying a load and a structure generally whatever the displacement pattern whatever we are seeing uh, this elast this uh, de deformation shape or deformation curve is called elastic curve elastic curve okay so when i am applying a load because of that load how the structure is deforming so if i show that deformation curve that curve is called elastic curve that curve is called elastic curve okay so because of the loads whether it is beam or column so the when we are applying the load the beam will deform in a different way the column will deform in a different way for the same load the slab will deform in a different way so for the same kind of load based on the placement where we are applying the load different structural elements deform differently and create different kinds of stresses so we have to analyze each and every element separately and design that element separately this column may be reacting this column which is at the corner may be reacting in a different way compared to the column which is here for the same kind of load so placement of the column so there are so many factors which influence the 
deformation and the types of stresses developed in it. So, our aim in this chapter is to identify what are the types of loads acting on the structure and calculate what is the variation of the loads along the structural element. For example, if I am calculating a bending moment here, will the bending moment will be same here in the same element? Obviously, no. Within the structural element also, from one cross section to other cross section, there will be variation of forces. Okay. So, our so generally axial load will not vary throughout the cross section. True. So, when I am applying a load throughout the cross sections, throughout the axial load for every cross section, the amount of axial load is same. But for a beam throughout the cross section, the shear force will vary, the bending moment will vary, the torsion also will vary. Okay. So, how this is varying along the length? Where it is subjected to maximum shear force, that cross section will fail in shear. Where it is subjected to maximum bending, that section will uh, fail in bending. Where it is subjected to maximum torsion, that section may fail in torsion. So, we have to safeguard the structure uh, to be within the limit or to be within the capacity how much it can take shear, how much bending it can take, how much torsion it can take. So, to understand that first we need to understand the variation of shear force, bending moment and torsion along the length of the structural element. Okay? So, that is why this chapter name is shear force diagram and bending moment diagram which shows the variation of shear force diagram and bending moment diagram along the structural element. Not for the entire structure we do not draw this, for individual structural element we draw. Even if we want if we, if we are asked to draw the uh, analysis of entire structure, we will be drawing the SFT BMD of columns, beams, everything separately only. For entire structure, we cannot draw this. For individual structural element, along the length of the element, how the shear force is varying, how the bending moment is varying, how the torsion is varying. If axial is also varying for some reason, we have to draw the variation also. So, along the cross section, how these forces are varying. If torsion is varying, torsion also should be drawn. Okay. So, the variation of shear force and bending moment is very very common that is why generally we will be showing the uh, variation of shear force and bending moment diagram, bending moment in uh, diagrammatic format that is why this is chapter is called shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. Okay. So, in the next class we will study how we draw this uh, shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for a given loading type and for a given type of structural element. Okay. Also, this uh, shear force diagram, bending moment diagram is majorly focused on uh, structural element beam. So, in the next class, we will see what are the various types of loads, what are the different names of the loads or various types of the loads that will be acting on the beam, what are the various types of beams we have and how the shear force uh, diagram will vary depending on the boundary condition, type of loads and the type of the beams that are acting. If it is prismatic and non-prismatic, will it vary? So, all this we will be discussing in the next class. Okay, na? So, that is all about the uh, introduction to uh, uh, SFD BMD, we can say. Okay?